the Fed, and now foreign banks are colluding to push more cash into the system. What does that mean for you? Well, there's a deeper issue here. Why are the power brokers so scared of failure? Hmm. I'll pay that one off in just a minute, but first, what's going on? The U.S. Federal Reserve and several other major central banks around the world announced a coordinated effort on Sunday night to boost the flow of U.S. dollars. This is from CNN. Uh, And they are boosting the flow of U.S. dollars through the global financial system with the aim, listen closely, why are they doing this? To keep credit flowing to households and businesses. It's about debt, folks. That's the game. There's a hint. Why do global financial leaders and politicians want to keep propping up a flawed financial system? Because they get paid to. That's why. Janet Yellen, God bless Janet. She is our U.S. Treasury Secretary. She said if banks are under stress, they might be reluctant to lend money. She said this in a testimony to the Senate Finance Committee. We could see credit become more expensive and less available. See, The excuse for pumping liquid cash into the global financial system is stability. We have to preserve financial stability. We don't want market tension. We can't let it fail. Okay, why? Okay, let's just have a conversation. How would this affect everything in our global economy, the American economy, and affect you. I'm going to explain. And I don't think it's as bad as they make it out to be. You know who it would be bad for if the system had a large chunk of failure and had to reset in some ways? Using the words of Janet Yellen, if the banks are under stress and they fail... We're not going to have as much credit, and it's going to be more expensive, and then what are we going to do? Clutching her pearls. I'll tell you, if credit were less available, we'd have less debt. If we had less debt, we'd have less stress. If we had less stress, you see where this keeps going? Everybody is feeling the stress of debt. I say let the banks fail. I say let the system crash. It's all built on debt. Banks, credit card companies, they want to give you as much access as possible to debt because that's how they make the big bucks. But our system, the American system, is buckling under the weight of debt. U.S. debt, all-time high. Trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. And right now in Washington, D.C., President Biden and Kevin McCarthy, that leader of the House, Speaker of the House, are in a stalemate. They're sending letters back and forth to each other like it's 1776. They're posturing all over the deal that they need to make, listen, to lift the federal government's debt limit and keep the system running. All right, now, that's where we stand. Now, let's just do some common sense, shall we? Let's just use a car as our metaphor today. Let's say that you got a car with over 200,000 miles on it, And you got one window duct taped. 
The car's leaking oil so much, you could charge for the oil on that you could hand out to somebody else. It's all over the road. It's breaking down every other week. You keep putting money into it just to keep it alive. How much longer do you want to keep doing this? What would be your appetite for keeping that car alive? Joe, you're the mechanic of the group. There's a law of diminishing returns on an old piece of crap. I mean, there's, there's a case to be made. Let's keep the hoopty alive for a while. But after a point where it becomes more expensive than sacrificing and saving to get something else, then it's time to say, let's take the old girl to the junkyard. Right you are, Ken. And, and so what's going on is, is our federal government and the debt and the banking system, we're just propping it up. Banks are being irresponsible. The federal government passed out PPP loans and then forgave them. And then you, you can't, you don't have to look too far to see how many billions of dollars of government aid in COVID were abused, stolen, completely untrackable, all this liquid into the economy gives people who are drunken more money to spend on the alcohol. Credit card debt, all-time high. Student loan debt, all-time high. Debt, 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 debt. Federal government raising the debt ceiling. Why are our American political and banking leaders and financial leaders so scared of letting the system fail? Two reasons. Number one, and first and foremost, is they're making a killing on it. They're laughing all the way to the doorstep of Congress to say, please bail us out. The other reason is they know it's a game. They know it's a scam. They don't want to go down. They want to keep it alive until they can cash out and head to Costa Rica, baby, where you can't find me anymore. That's what's going on. And it's all on the backs of the American citizen, the American consumer, who's been sold the lie that debt is the best way to get what you want in life. They don't want it to fail. I'm telling you, it should fail. It needs to fail. It's time for a reset. It's time for some embarrassment. Let the old car die. Let's get a new one.